<laughs> I used to be in back. The what happens magic is magic is gone. You know, in in uh, in a normal rectangular beam, you know, the shear cracks happen diagonally right here. That they put all kinds of shear reinforcement okay, they, here. Yeah, that's right. To keep the shear cracks from happening. Those shear cracks are happening because there's a diagonal tension. The tension that we want to be on the bottom wants to hang. So yeah. it rises up to the support, yeah. to the top of the support. And so there's a tension there and it cracks. If you follow the natural hanging line of the force, mm -hmm. there's no shear cracks. All mm -hmm. of these cracks in this beam are from this steel stretching. Yeah. So there's no other reinforcing in this beam besides the bottom steel. Huh. Uh, that's the work that, that um, Ferry Boris Hashemi and this engineering student is doing now, is to yeah. follow the actual behavior of the internal stresses of, of these curved beams so that we can design them. Because yeah. no one knows how to design them. There's no, no. there's no recipe book for that. Do you see a connection between your work and that of Nervi? He's a god to me. Uh, yeah. You know, and Eastler, and especially um, especially um, Eladio Dieste. Do you know Eladio Dieste? I didn't know him. This Uruguayan engineer did all these brick shells. He's great because he's a bit like he's a bit like um, he's, he's a bit like um, Fry Auto in mm. that he's his work is so simple. It's mm. so he's just bricks. Mm. It's nothing but bricks. Mm. And it, he but he's free. I mean his bricks will span you know I don't know, 60 feet mm. like cantilevered out 60 feet, but they're all in compression. Mm. Mm. It's brilliant. He's yeah. just brilliant. And he's shaping. It's also kind of shaping. Of, of the structural surfaces, mm. really beautiful, mm. beautiful architecture that he gets yeah. just by doing that. Yeah. yeah. So this is a kind of fundamentalist line in here. Huh? This is a when once we start spanning and following the forces, yeah. there's a kind of dictation which occurs, which huh. which I, which I personally find quite similar to the dictation I would do when I was hallucinating in the, those drawings. Yeah. 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 It's, it's not of my authorship. Uh -huh. It's a kind of, yeah. you know, it's through me, but not my, but not my authorship, which is a great pleasure to me, actually. Yeah. Nature's, uh, nature's yeah. authorship. Nature's in this case. authorship. He also he he just hung fabric. Got all this from Eastler, you know. He hang, hung his this fabric and then hardened resin or something and flipped them over and did physical tests like like uh, Fry Auto did because yeah. he had no computers. Yeah. That's how they did it without computers. Yeah, they would make a physical model and then load up the physical model and register the strains, the, the deformation of the thing. Mm -hmm. And f if you know the stiffness of the material and you know the strain, you know the force that's in it. It's a very, it's just a little fraction. It's just a little fraction, fractional relationship. You immediately know the force, and then you can design the thing. And that's how they would do it. They put these very careful physical readings off the physical models. Are we losing the artistry of this with AutoCAD and everything? Um, I think it's actually probably making it easier in a certain way mm -hmm. because you don't have to do all of this fussy little physical. When, if you can make them, if you can make the three-dimensional model for the thing, that's the just the trick. You know, can you can you do that? But there are people, for example, at Bath University, who I know who can, they could model any of these things that we do. They can do them virtually in a computer. Mm -hmm. they, they just take the fabric as a as a very loose cable net. And they can do this stuff. So once once they've got that in three space, then you can do a, a stress analysis on the shape. So it makes it po it makes it conceivable that you could take any of these shapes that naturally occur from the fabric, and they could be engineered. Mm. We, we have the tools to do it. Mm. It's really a question of the sort of reflection that then takes place on two different processes. The sort of things you'd notice if you make it like this, or if you see it on the screen. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. And and it'll be very interesting for me in years to come to see what happens when someone else gets the computer tools and starts doing this stuff. Whether 
you know, whether my, let's say, kind of deep physical knowledge, I fit for the physical intuition that I own by virtue of having done these things repeatedly in a physical way, whether it's, you know, what, what the value of that is or what's missing or the, like how to, what the difference would be, it would be really interesting to know. I can't imagine it myself. I mean, if I did it on a machine, I would, it would be a physical event for me. It wouldn't be like a little movie. Oh, look at this form. I don't. I, uh, this is not really known what preparatory work was done by those who built the Gothic cathedrals. And you do wonder whether it was a question of, hmm, looks all right to me, let's go ahead and try it. When you think of Beauvais Cathedral in France, so what was it? The central crossing crashed down and took with it the nave as it came down. Have you ever seen that one? Well, it, it looks even, it was the last cathedral to be built. And um, uh, it was the tallest. I think each town competed with its neighbor, you know, okay, his, the vault's 165 feet from the ground, we'll have to make ours 280, 180, <laughs> and so on. <laughs> and the whole tower crashed down, and what's left is the nave and the transepts. Mm. But it looks all the taller because there's just that one part of it. Mm. And uh, so I, I think they learned by that. And they lost 30 construction workers or something, but hey, you know, all in a good cause. Hmm? <laughs> Watch it. What have I said? Something <laughs> imprudent. <laughs> Political correctness, dear. Workers? <laughs> 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 medieval workers? 